Hello everybody, Dr. Carmen Bryant here, Psychological Health Consultants and Services and Redefining Yourself, a program that I develop for women that are in, that are thinking of leaving, that um, are needing more education, or have left domestic violence relationships, um, or domestic violent relationships. Uh, my main focus is uh, narcissist abuse uh, and narciss narcissist abuse recovery. Uh, I am a licensed mental health counselor in the great evergreen state of Washington and I am a certified life coach and a certified trauma professional. And so I took an interest in um, educating people on narcissist abuse and narcissist abuse recovery, uh, especially as a clinician in my private practice. Um, and having been a survivor for over 22 plus years, um, I, like uh, many other certified coaches that you see on YouTube, uh, being survivors of narcissist abuse can take that information, learn from it, and educate uh, many of you to either come out of it or to recover from it. The biggest problem that I find in counseling is to convince someone that this was not your fault. And so uh, today I just wanted to, if you have not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. And please hit the bell so that you can be alerted whenever I come on. Uh, I also have a professional Facebook page, which is Psychological Health Consultants and Services. I know that is a mouthful, forgive me, uh, but that is my professional Facebook page. And today I just wanted to ask a question by... Um, uh, a question that was asked by Gracefully Broken. And one of the questions, she asked a few, one of the questions I was gonna respond to today is, let me go look at the question. What is it like living with a narcissist? And so I made a little list and I just want you to know that, um, of course the list is more extensive than this, but as a respecter for time, I just put a few things down here, uh, you know, that a lot of us had in common with the abuser that we were with. Um, and one thing that I would like to encourage today after today's um, uh, video is for those of you, uh, when you hear, uh, you, a lot of this is gonna be very familiar to you. And uh, what I would, I would ask is if you will be kind enough to put some comments if I miss, of course, I'm going to miss some things. Put some comments because I'm trying to com uh, uh, create a community of um, women. And even though men go through the exact same thing, I kind of catered more toward the women. But I always make sure that I include the men while I'm talking because you guys go through the same thing that we go through. Um, but I would like for you guys to put some comments in the comments section and just, um, excuse me, and just add. Let me let me adjust my camera. Um, but I just want you to add um, some of the things that you may have been through, uh, you know, to add to my list. Um, so if I've missed something, and the reason why I say that is because um, we have viewers, and when the viewers are looking, you can relate. And the one thing that I'm trying to do is to unravel you from the gaslighting, unravel you from the thoughts of, I'm crazy, something is wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you. There was something wrong with them. Um, remember, you're dealing with a narcissist. You're dealing with an individual that literally has a mental health condition, a dysfunctional mental health uh, condition. It is a personality disorder. So, um, those of you that, that have been with narcissists know exactly what that abuse is like. Those of you that have never been with a narcissist, as my mentor always says, you'll know if you've been with one. You will know if you've been with one. Uh, but today I just wanted to just do a brief list. Uh, and like I said, please, in the comment section, um, you know, whatever I didn't add, I want you guys to add some list of your own. Just add some uh, experiences and, and they do this and they do this. You know, add some comments on there because I want, um, you know, viewers that are in recovery or that are thinking of leaving, you know, the relationship. I want them to be able to look and see that, uh, you know, we all have something very much in common. And so a lot of things that you've experienced, other people have experienced as well. Okay, so let's go to the love bombing. So majority of you guys will love bomb to get you into the relationship the first thing is, is the red flag and as police officers say we go by instinct we go by our gut instinct and that's how we solve crimes okay you got to go by your, your your instinct you can't go by your emotions first of all if your emotions are all over the place and you fall in love immediately uh, that's a red flag uh, but the love bombing phase uh, the first thing uh, to introduction into the relationship is they're gonna over compliment uh, they're going to um, 
rush into the relationship uh, they're they're gonna uh, you know you're beautiful oh my gosh I've never met anybody like you um, you know you're the best thing that I've ever met you're like no other woman or like no other man that I've ever met um, you know I've, I've never uh, had an experience with it with a person like you you are awesome you are so compassionate you're you know all of this now for the for the young people now Keep in mind, I'm only about 19 years old myself. You know, I'm, I'm talking about these young people, you know, my, my age group. I'm not talking about you old fogies. Uh, joke, joke. But anyway, for the young people, some of us have been through this. And so when you age and get a little more mature, all those compliments is almost like our kids talking to us. Mommy, you are so wonderful. You are so pretty. Daddy, you're the best dad in the whole world. We already know it's a follow-up. Can I have... Can I, can I have, you know, well, that's just like the narcissist, you know, they're, 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 they're waxing you up, you know, they're greasing you up. Uh, they're over complimenting you. They're, 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 you know, everything is overboard. It's too much. Now for, for younger people that have never experienced it before, you know, they're, most women, they don't mind compliments. We love compliments. We love to feel good about ourselves. And we love to know that the person that we're with you know feels that way about us but this is one of those situations where it's overboard now remember you still have levels of narcissism you have a uh, young mid old uh no nah, i was gonna say old uh, the the low mid uh high and elite group of narcissists narcissists uh you have trained them uh and every person they have with have taken them to another level of narcissism uh the 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 low to mid have a problem with controlling their emotions and rage uh that's probably mid even to elite uh as they get higher up on the spectrum of of narcissism you know as they become more trained uh they have more experiences with with different people um uh, they've learned to kind of uh calm down you know calm down uh, and and not overdo it so much but you still sometimes you'll still catch a red flag sometimes you won't uh, they can't hold a mask very long you know and you'll see some things leaking out and I'll give you an example once they've started to get comfortable with you you know watch and see how they talk to other people watch and see how they talk about their exes watch and see the things that they say watch and see if they're always the victim and everyone around them is this horrible person everyone at work does them wrong no one knows what they're talking about uh you know they know so much uh they're more experienced than the average person you know um this is what i've been going through all my life you know and the problem that i run in is people are always jealous of me so wherever i go you know i know that i have a gift i know that i'm talent and you know the problem that i always run in with people is that i have people that always want to sabotage me or hate me a lot of time they project project themselves onto other people as well but notice when they don't take accountability of their of their uh, actions notice they don't take responsibility or accountability of anything that they do Everyone, they're always the victim, and everybody is just so horrible. Now, unless the, the individual that they're referring to is, you know, making them feel grand, that, that grandiose, uh, uh, high ego, make them feel like a god. That's what they're looking for, that, that you know, that praise, that, you know, you're so wonderful, almighty narcissist. That's what they're looking for. And so then they'll have good things to say. So you'll hear good report. Um, also, another red flag is uh, if they're grooming a new supply, you'll notice they're always, you know, uh, well, sometimes, not always, uh, you know, my friend, my friend, you know, my friend, she said, my friend, he said, my, fr my friend, and, and my friend, and my friend, and my friend, and it's almost like, uh, do you know who you're talking to? You're talking to your husband, you know, you're talking to your wife, do you understand? You know, no, my friend, my friend, uh, pay attention to that. You know, when they over talk about an individual, uh, sometimes they're a little smoother than that, you know. Um, another thing is, uh, like I said, if, you know, what do they say? How do they handle their family members? How do they handle, uh, you know, the opposite gender? You know, what do they act like when they get angry? You see them fly off into a rage and, you know, and then they look at you like you're the only one that knows how to calm me down because, you know, you're, you know, you're just the perfect person for me. Okay very flattering but but i want you to pay attention to that that's a red flag um uh always justifying and they and they're always blaming so they're always blaming they're always the victim uh even with you you know 
uh, let's say that you are in domestic violence and, and you threaten to call the police if they put their hands on you again or you threaten to call the police, they'll flip it around on you like, you do that? I knew you wanted to destroy me. And why would you call and destroy my career? Or, or why would you say that and cause me to go to jail? How am I supposed to take care of my family? And, and I can't believe that you would do this to me. And how can you just destroy me? The, you know, think about it. And then what ends up happening is, is the person that they trauma bond is like, yeah, you're right. You know, I couldn't, you know, you know, we can work this out. We don't have to involve of the outside people and and you're just trying to destroy me what am I supposed to do if I lose my job if I lose my career how am I supposed to support myself how am I supposed to sustain and take care of you guys and then you're okay you know and that's that's commonly what what we have done and what we what we do and people do you know especially when you are connected with a narcissist and you love them you know and they've trauma bonded you uh, and so but but you notice that they've turned the blame back on you you know as if you've done something wrong uh, let's see um, um, conditional love so their love is conditional meaning it is um, it is can is it contingent on uh, what you supply for them if you do what they want you to do if you agree with what they agree for example if they want money to make a major purchase or they want to make a major purchase and they want you to spend your money on doing it they want money from you or if there's something that they want to do as long as you're agreeing and you're going with the grain you know, they'll pet you, they'll stroke you, and all oh, you're so wonderful, and I love you so much. I, you know, I just, I love you so, you don't know, I love you so much. But the moment you say no, that's like a slap in their face. <sighs> no, you know, and then the torment begins. The degrading, the devaluing, you know, uh, they will sleep deprive you. They won't allow you to go to sleep. And they'll try to force you to either agree and to go along with them, or they'll try to force you to change your mind and force you to apologize. You owe me an apology because you're supposed to be my partner and you're supposed to you're supposed to support my decisions. What kind of a partner, what kind of a wife or husband are you that you don't even support me in my endeavors? You know, any other woman or any other man would, you know, what are they comparing it to? You know, any other man would or any nine times out of ten, if any other man or any other woman knew what the narcissist were like they wouldn't be with you if they knew exactly what you were like they wouldn't be with you you know so think about what they're saying to you when they're saying to it you know any other man and 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 you know women would fall over and, and die you know to have someone like me um, I've even and and here you go um, uh, miss gracefully broken here's an example um, it's better to have a piece of a man than not have a man at all you don't know how many women would kill to be with a man like me um, and you're just ungrateful and you're dissatisfied look at all the things that I do for you any woman would love to have that okay now I want you to think about this for a minute any woman that doesn't know how the narcissist is if a reasonable insane you know I'm insane but a reasonable sane logical individual that uses logic and common sense knew what this narcissist was doing and their emotions weren't everywhere they wouldn't want to be with the narcissist either so that comment that 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 pay attention to those comments pay attention to those comments you know people will die to be with someone like me and you're ungrateful and 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 un, you know ungrateful and 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 you know i much rather be with someone that cares and 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 values and is appreciative of the things that i do and yet you're spending all the money so i just pay attention to that so that's an example i just want to give you an example i'll probably have another example for you um let's see because she asked for examples so uh let's see um, as long as they're getting what they want, they'll give you, you know, the love that you, that you have vulnerably, you know, that, that you have expressed in your vulnerability and expressed your, your, your pain and your hurts. So remember I told you they listen to your, your conversation and they pick out your vulnerabilities in order to use it against you later on. And that's how they try to control you. As long as you do what they want you to do and you stay under their control, then they will give you what you desire, love and affection. Um, they so you may be excited about maybe like a, uh, a college degree a new career a project that you're on something that's very important to you and, and at first they're you know yeah I'm proud of you you know yeah you know good job you know but you can you don't feel the sincerity um, and then when you start and, and it may supersede what they're doing uh, and then when you begin to pursue it and you're so excited about it and you can you know people can feel all the energy and oh my gosh look you know uh, they'll play it down yeah that's okay you know yeah that's that's all right you know okay you know or um, say you have to study for an exam and 
all of a sudden they become the victim. You never spend time with me. You know, that degree is more important than I am. And, and you know, lately you haven't spent time. So you may decide, I'm going to put this all aside and I'll just stay up all night. I'll put an all-nighter to get this done and spend time. Then when you spend time, it's almost like it was a waste of your time. You didn't pay attention to me. You didn't even converse with me. You didn't look at me. So it was just a waste of time, you know. Uh, and it becomes this never-ending argument, you know. You feel unappreciated. You feel, you know, uh, devalued. That's the game that they play but they sabotage. They much rather see you fail than to succeed. So what they say out of their mouth is not the actions. And then when you mention that to them, uh, you know, of course, you know, they're going to gaslight. They're going to make you feel as if you're crazy. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Why wouldn't I want you to succeed? If you succeed, the family succeeds. That sounds logical, but their behavior and their attitude speaks opposite than what they're, the words that are coming out of their mouth. Um, they don't have a problem with being loud with you in public. Loud, humiliate you in public to embarrass you. Uh, so they'll get you in public so they can, uh, you know, make snide remarks, make uh, say things to you to get you back in control, to get you in check. If they know that it's so humiliating, your ears may turn red, you're embarrassed, they'll use that more often in order to get control. Or if, if they feel like you're getting out of control, that's what they'll use to embarrass you or the children. Um, they'll lie. So what will happen is, is they may... Uh, they'll try to get you to co-sign with them um, in a lie that they're telling. They'll lie about an automobile that they have, a house that they bought, land or property that they own, people, you know, famous people that they know or job offers that they got. And then they'll look and say, hey, if you don't believe me, ask my wife, ask my husband. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Now, if you make the mistake in disagreeing with them in public and causing a narcissistic injury, and you said, no, that's not true, you will probably be publicly humiliated on the spot. Be prepared that you will probably have a sleepless night because they will torment you in the car, they will torment you at home, they won't let it go. They're like a pit bull that is bitten into something and they won't let go. They will convince you that you owe them an apology for publicly humiliating them in front of all their friends and you are their partner, wife, husband, and that you're supposed to support me even if I do lie. You're supposed to support me. Okay, but but do you see how they play on your emotions and they know that they're lying and, and, and they expect you to be dishonest right along with them, but they'll flip it on you so make you apologize and you'll get, they'll wear you down so much that you'll apologize for something that you had nothing to do with. They lied. That's exactly what they did. They lied. Um, let's see. Um, they allow people to disrespect you. So remember, they have flying monkeys. They have their own cheer. They have their entourage, you know, family, uh, friends. Uh, they're flying monkeys, the people that they have gathered and, and talked about you. So they have probably worked diligently on making sure that all these people are loyal to them. Now, there are those uh, uh, narcissists that, that, that throw cash at people, you know, to get them to be loyal to them. Uh, and you have to watch that. You know, if you're that desperate for money that you're willing to sell your soul to, to uh, bow down at the foot of a narcissist and it takes money for your loyalty, then, then you're not a friend anyway. Uh, but that's what some fly monkeys do. You know, that hush money, uh, that, 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 you know, I'll pay this bill, I'll pay this, you know, I'll give you that or I'll buy you this, you know, just so you'll maintain your loyalty to the narcissist. So be prepared that he's already talked about you. They are extremely loyal to the narcissist. And so they've already drew a picture of you because they know that if you tell the story and you tell the truth about them, they've already painted a picture of you that you're crazy. And the way that you can tell that they've already talked about you is by the way that people handle you. Either they're very distant or they're also dis disrespectful. Uh, and then the narcissist won't correct the person or they're like, hey, 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 hey. You know, but it's not a real correction. It's not a correction. And you can tell. So I advise you to stand your ground and make sure that no one runs over you nor disrespects you. I don't care if they are the flying monkeys or not. You demand your respect. Uh, and But they will push, you know, and especially if they're grooming a new supply. Whatever they've told a new supply, the new supply is already on their side. So if you ever run into the new supply, they're going to have, they're going to hurl some insults at you what the narcissist says. You'll find out what the narcissist says if you ever run face to face. But they love to see, you know, two sources of supply, the main supply and the secondary supply fight because it makes them look good in front of people in their mind. It, it, it feeds into their ego, it feeds into that grandiosity, you know. Um, let's see. Uh, so if they can't get their way, um, now, 
think about this for a minute. Uh, when you're dealing with little kids, little kids have temper tantrums. So if they can't get anything, they throw themselves on the floor, they have screaming fits, you know, or uh, if they're tired or hungry, you know, we usually can uh, gauge our kids when they were tired or when they were hungry, they needed a nap, they wanted something to eat. And, and I remember one day my, my, my nephew was having a temper tantrum, he was screaming, and I said, okay, what is the problem? What is it that you need? And he said he was hungry, so I gave him something to eat and he was fine. You know, and, and kids are not able to articulate their feelings a lot of times when their head hurts, when their stomach hurts, or when they're hungry or when they're sleepy and they're tired, you know, so it's up to us to be able to kind of gauge that behavior because they're not really good at expressing what they're feeling. Well, a narcissist is exactly like that. It is a grown child. And when they can't get what they want, they have giant temper tantrums in which they begin to punish you. Uh, they begin to torment you. They'll torment your kids until they get what they want until they exhaust you and wear you down enough for you to just say, you know, fine, just go ahead, just go ahead. And that's what their expectation is. And they have that much energy that they will keep you up for hours, a whole night, and then you leave, you may have to go to work and you're exhausted, you come back and they'll start all over again to get what they want. That is how relentless they are. They'll sleep during the day. They'll call in, call in sick just to sleep and then they'll torment you all over again just to get what they want. That's how relentless they are. Um, so you have to be equally relentless. Leave. Uh, let's see. Um, They'll always keep the entire house on edge. They always make sure the environment is 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 that anxious, anxiety-ridden, eggshell-walking environment. They blow into rage. They blow up in rages for no reason. To you know, and and I think I said it. Um, you know, if if they're grooming a new uh, supply, and let's say the the new supply is putting pressure on them because they want to see them, and they're trying to reel this new supply in and they're putting pressure on them and so they have to find they have to create a diversion they get themselves out of the house so they'll create a a they'll blow into a they'll, they'll blow up into a rage or they'll pick an argument with you in order to get an excuse to leave the house you you acted this way so i had to get out in order to keep my sanity and if you don't play into it and you don't say anything they get even more enraged to a point where it's a full-blown argument and you're left to think like what in the world was that it was an excuse to get out of the house to get to the new supply because they're grooming a new supply and be prepared that the discard is coming. Um, and sometimes the new supply doesn't work out for them either. So they come back to Hoover you some more. Um, but they always keep the whole household on edge. You know, everybody's anxious. The cat's anxious. The dog's anxious. The fish anxious. You know, everyone. It, it's an environment that they create on purpose to keep you off kilter, to keep you uh, uh, ungrounded. Um, the last thing I'm going to say is um, they're, they're lazy. And when I say they're lazy, I mean they walk around entitled. Uh, for example, a male will use male privilege and will make you feel as if you are subservient and everyone else is subservient to that individual person. There's a difference between, you know, an equal display of give and take. You know, you respect me, I respect you. You do for me and I do for you. You know, even in the home, take out the trash sometimes. Don't pick up your clothes, you know. Make it an equally shared, loving environment. They don't do that. They feel that everyone in the house is there to cater to them. They won't pick up their clothes. They won't iron for themselves. I'm surprised they won't ask someone to come in there and, and, and give them a bath. And I know some of you are probably looking like, I did that too. You probably did. They convinced you to do it. Uh, they won't pick up behind themselves. Uh, you know, everyone has to cater to them. You know, uh, where's the food? You know, well, I haven't been home. I just walked in with you. Oh, so what does that mean? So I'm supposed to sit here and starve because, you know, you couldn't hurry yourself up and get in here. You couldn't, uh, you know, complete your meeting fast enough and you have... Uh, you know, responsibilities at the home, you know, uh, gosh, or they make you feel, you know, obligated to put your bank accounts together and they deplete all your money. They use all your money for everything and they give you a little stipend, you know, a little money and you have bills that you have to pay, you know, so they are entitled individuals and they will make the people around them in their own house. Uh, they, you know, force them to cater to them. They, they won't do anything because that's, that's the entitlement they walk around in. And so just want to say thank you guys for watching. Please leave a comment and give me some of your experiences. You know, if, obviously I did leave out a lot, you know, because, you know, I want to be respectful for time. But I want you to put in the comments, you know, other examples. You know, they do this, they do that. You know, give me some more examples. And, and the reason why I say that is because I want other people to read the comments and let them know that you're not crazy. And if you're experiencing that as right now, you know, you're getting a sense of relief. Like, I knew there was nothing wrong with me. Not like, not like that. You know, they make me feel like I'm crazy. They make me feel like... and. Um, 
and uh, uh, to my friend, uh, uh, gracefully broken. Let me give you another example. They'll th do things like this uh, to make a person feel crazy. Um, they'll say, you know, a reasonable person, a person with common sense, a normal individual, you know, the average person. So you know they're already taking you out of that normalcy. An average person, a normal person, a person with, with uh, you know, a reasonable person, a person with common sense wouldn't eat chitlins or chitterlings, chitlins down south. Or the opposite, you know, a reasonable, normal uh, person would eat chitlins, you know. Uh, or uh, uh, the chili epidemic, you know, uh, it, it becomes a problem. There are people that eat chili with crackers, and there are others that eat chili and rice. Uh, and they'll tell you that you are not normal because they happen to like chili with rice or they like chili with crackers, it doesn't matter. But whatever they, that they like and you don't like, you become the unreasonable, unrealistic uh, person with an issue because you're not like the rest of the people because a normal individual or a, a, a regular American individual or a southerner or a northerner, you know, would eat this or eat that well teach his own everybody has their own taste buds if i eat you know pickles with peanut butter then that's what i want to eat pickles and peanut butter it may not be something that you like so so whatever they like they they think that if you don't like what they like then you are unreasonable you don't have common sense and you're not normal and the more you hear that you begin to believe that well maybe i'm not normal you know well, maybe i'm not a reasonable intelligent individual but the more a person you know attacks you that way the more you start believing that about yourself so hopefully this has helped today hopefully you know gracefully broken this has answered one of your questions uh thank you guys so much for tuning in thank you for supporting me all the emails the inboxes and even the youtube comments thank you so so much and gracefully broken i know you said that he wanted he's joking around and he wants you to help him fry a turkey stay no contact and make sure that you um stonewall stonewall mean taking all your emotions out but make sure since you don't have anything with this individual stay no contact and it, it'll get easier with time, easier with time. Don't even respond to that foolishness. You know, uh, to them it's funny because they just want to see there's still an open door. They, they're, he's hoovering. So make sure you keep that door closed. You continue your no contact and you continue to heal. Um, I don't know if this is a hard week for you or not, but, you know, from me to you, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to each and every one of you that are watching. And I want you to know, as my friend always says, go and be great. And I add to it, I really mean that.